Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing today? So I was a slightly bit late at getting the uh, get myself on screen. Apologies for that. I uh, hope you are all well. Hopefully, I'm coming through nice and loud and clear on the audio as well. I've been fiddling around with the studio slightly this evening, so uh, things are just just a slight little tweak. So coming up tonight, I want to discuss how you store your homegrown produce and what you do to make your homegrown produce last for quite a long time. Before that, we'll go through what I've been up to over this last week. And of course, let me know what you've been up to yourselves. But first, let's see if anybody is out there. So Adrian, who was there right at the very beginning, how are you doing? Uh, Oracle Ards Allotment is out there. Hello, Army. I hope everyone has had a brilliant week. We shall find out. Uh, Rebecca is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Anna Jones is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well too. Uh, Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Philly SPB has joined. Evening, everyone. Uh, Graham Arnold is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening, everyone. Hope you've all had a great week. Richard Golden is out there. Hello to you. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Just on my way back home from Bognor Regis to Nottingham. Hope you've all had a great week. I'm only in the next town over from Bognor Regis, funnily enough. I've, uh, uh, I know we've had some great weather this weekend. I'm guessing you were here for Butlins. That's just a guess. Uh, Ian Beddows, hello from a wet and windy North Manchester. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson, hi all. I hope everyone is well. Good evening to you. Anna Jones, the same, very windy in the northeast. Uh, Lisa from Not Just Green Fingers UK blog. Good evening, all. Good evening to you. Jenny Hallett, hello, everyone. Hope you are well. Good evening to you. Oracle says, before we start, I hope my friend Stuart Jackson is okay. I'm sure he is okay, still recovering from the operation that he has had. Uh, Ian Beddows, please, please don't last here. Tums and smuds get pot cooked in partitions and frozen. That's with the discussion that we've got coming up a little bit later on. So, as always, what have we been up to over this last week? Well, I spent quite a while yesterday down on the allotment just um, making the most of this beautiful sunny weather that we had. Uh, I've estimated that this coming week is when our allotments get ex inspections. So I went down there and I've just gone and blitzed the entire area to try and make sure there's not a single weed in sight. Easy said and done, I know. And just make it look like something is happening, just so that when the inspections come along, there's nothing to worry them. Fingers crossed. I'm always a little bit worried when it comes to inspection time. But the annoying thing that I had, actually, when I got to my allotment yesterday, somebody, another allotment holder, had decided to dump a load of their weeds onto my one, or one of my allotment beds. And it took me, I didn't notice it straight away, but when I did notice it, I was rather annoyed, as you can imagine. I had to clear them away, which... Uh, a pot straight in my compost bin, which, you know, that's not a huge problem. I'm always after more compost material. Um, but I was really annoyed that somebody, and they covered over my leeks and some of my spring planted garlic, was not happy, to say the least, was not happy at all. So, um, yeah, wasn't happy with that. Anyway, yeah, we blitzed, I blitzed the entire area and tidied it up. Uh, I've, I planted out, what did I do? Planted out some beans, got some structures in place for extra peas, sown some more peas. Um, basically, just had a really busy day on the allotment, and I feel better for it. I actually popped back down there this morning at 7 just to check on things and give everything another good watering, especially after the plants that I have planted. Now, here at home, we've been, also been sown a few more seeds, sown some spinach and uh, a few other... Um, spinach a few more peas uh we got the patio and the balcony garden really looking together i'm just uh not so sure about the front garden at the moment it just feels like there's too much to do i've got lots and lots of pot plants in pots particularly fruit to go in the front garden and i just something is holding me back from putting them all out there so yeah busy 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 is what i've got to say best of all 
harvests are finally coming in. I harvested a good lot of new potatoes. We've got some rhubarb. We've got strawberries. We've got raspberries. Basically, food is really starting to come in now. Harvested the last of the asparagus. Won't be harvesting asparagus again this year. So over to you guys. Let me know what you have been up to over this last week on your own allotments. Uh, so Kate said, we were down visiting a, f- a family for a party in Stripney. Lovely weather. It's been really lovely weather this weekend here. Really lovely weather. Uh, oh, cool. That's brilliant. The army is on the mend. Yeah, referring to Stuart Jackson. I'm, I'm assuming he's on the mend anyway. He, I saw him earlier, so uh, he can let us know. Uh, Digwell, literally just finished chopping my last trombocchino and butternut squash to make a mango-style chutney. They are soaking in sugar and fenugreek overnight, ready for cooking tomorrow. That sounds delicious. Mango-style chutney, that sounds delicious. And when you say your last trombocchino and butternut squash, I'm guessing they were last from last year, or last uh, squashes left over from last year. Please do let us know. Uh, Turbo stream. This week has mainly been weeding and reinstalling the water, but I had drained to repair this shed on the plot. You're going to be wanting some rain now, aren't you? <laughs> it would be nice to get a bit more rain. Kate says the cheek of throwing the weeds on your plot out of order. Indeed, really out of order. I was not happy with that at all. Um, I've just realized I missed that. Someone uh, not happy about that at all, and it's something I'm going to complain about because I don't think that's good. Good uh, allotment tiership, shall we say? I wouldn't do it to one of my neighbors, I wouldn't expect it done to me. Uh, Idaho Guy and Girls join. Good evening to you. Uh, Turbo Stream has also transplanted some leeks and swede and been strimming the glass grass too. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, good to see. Now, what does uh, Lisa say? That's terrible that somebody had dumped their weeds on your plot. I pulled up my garlic today, lofty, lost 50% to white rot, but had some of my first early potatoes that I grew in pots started off in a polytunnel. Yeah, it is annoying about these weeds, but that's... <laughs> I, I was really annoyed about it, and I'm trying to play it down a little bit, but actually I'm really annoyed about it. But it, the interesting you say about garlic, because I've noticed some of my garlic, it's not been a great year for garlic. Onions, however, have been fantastic. Uh, but some of my onions look like they've suffered a bit from white rot as well. So I've got to keep a close eye on what's going on there. Uh, on the plot, I this is Kate. I pot, pot in raised beds and sown carrots. Found birds have had most of the gooseberries and pears. Didn't realize they would raid them like that. Oh, yes, birds will raid anything that is ripe before your very eyes, given half a chance. I'm just noticing my cherry tree, the cherries on that are becoming beautifully red and almost ready. So we are getting very, very close to getting cherries, but then it's a race of time to try and harvest them before the birds nibble them. I've actually got quite a few cherry trees that have self-seeded in various places. I'm going to dig up over the winter and pot into other uses. Digwood has been succession sowing and sowing to replace slug damaged seeds, beetroot, runners, lettuce, etc. etc. See, this is something I've, I'm discussing a lot at the moment. There's still plenty of time to sow lots and lots of seeds, and there's lots of seeds that we can actually sow. I'm particularly looking to prepare, and you'll hear about this on the podcast tomorrow, preparing to prepare, preparing for our winter vegetables. So our cabbages, our kale, our cauliflowers, they're going to start being sown. Uh, well, they started being sown already. Idaho was weeding, mowing and going to transplant out tomatoes today, but we are getting rain today. A busy, busy, busy there, indeed. Um, Turbo Stream cleared some cabbages, which weren't doing very well. Not growing cabbages again. I don't like them either. I like cabbages. I do like cabbages. Um, But if you don't like them, there's no point growing them. I think that is probably my first rule of grow your own. Don't grow anything you don't like. Um, Rebecca says, I've been busy in the garden today, planting out some beetroot in between my garlic, planting sweet corn, water and feeding. It's non-stop. Yes, it is certainly non-stop. And I'm glad, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only person doing a lot of these same tasks. Uh, sweet corn's going in the ground, beetroot's going in the ground, watering, feeding. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work at the same time. Um, 
uh, another poor garlic harvest for Digwell. I may not bother with them this autumn. No disease, just small. I think it's because it was such a dry spring that the garlic has struggled this year. I could be wrong, but I do think that's why they've been so small. Uh, I'm actually, normally I save the biggest bulbs for my garlic, but next year or this year, I'm going to buy fresh garlic seed um, to start again. Oracle says, I wouldn't accept it too, Richard. I would take it to the committee as this could happen to others. What the hell was that? Yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I'm going to complain about it, of course. But what, for those that have joined in, don't know what I'm talking about. Somebody's dumped a load of weeds on one of my beds. What my neighbours have a tendency to do, and I've complained about this, on the roads, they dump all their weeds in order to make it a bit more traction for the vehicles when they drive past. Uh, so I'm wondering if they've dump, meant to dump it on the road and ended up dumping it on my bed by accident. I don't know. The kid got involved or something. I don't know. But this is what we I'm going to bring up, and I've hopefully get it sorted and it doesn't happen again other than that i'm going to set a wildlife camera up and catch anybody who's doing it in the action i don't want to do that but it happens uh beatrice joined good evening hope you are well hope you are well too uh, lisa says anyone having problem with flea beetle this year i'm being hit hard with it this year i've not had any problems with flea beetle myself this year, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm quite lucky. I don't get many in much in the way of pests. But we'll ask anybody else. Anybody else having trouble with flea beetle? And what do you do to tackle flea beetle as well? Uh, Stuart says, I'm good after my art, but still no garden for the next couple of weeks. Indeed. Um, a glorious sunny evening, Richard. Apparently, it's going to be so all week here in North Dorset. So I'm guessing all week gardening all week for you of course we never stop gardening here uh da, 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 da. right well do keep letting us know what you've been up to in your own allotments and your own gardens uh we'll move on in fact i should just say uh the phone line is open i thought we weren't going to have it for a second um because of various reasons or the link if you want to zap yourself in is now in the comments as well um so how do you store your homegrown produce this is something that i i can't remember who suggested this topic it was a while ago but it's a sub topic that i think is so important when we grow our own vegetables you know what's the point in growing I mean, I believe in trying to eat seasonally where we can. But at the same point, if we can stretch our vegetables so that they last a bit longer, then all well and good. I'm a big, and this is not just because it's my my job. It keeps me in, employed. I'm a big believer in refrigeration, uh, freezing a lot of our food in various uh, guises, be it we just freeze it as it is. So we, we might blanch it for a couple of minutes in some hot water, then cool it down quite rapidly and put that in the freezer. I'm a big believer in doing that. Or we might make some meals up, almost like ready meals to go in the freeze, freezer as well. Again, I'm a big believer in doing that. And we do that a lot. And so that, that way... You know those times when you come home from work late and you just really, or you're tired and you're ill and you just want to cook something quickly? There you go, you got a ready meal effectively, a homegrown ready meal that is, straight out of the freezer, just warm it up. We don't have a microwave, so it's all in the oven, but warm it up and there off we go. And I, 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 I'm a, a, let's say, I'm using a fridge and freezer, a fridge, not so much, but a freezer. Coming to things like freezing fruits, strawberries. I mean, strawberries don't freeze very well at all. There is a way you can get them to, to freeze well, but that's a case of turning your freezer really down low. So it goes ultra, ultra cold and then freeze your strawberries uh, so they don't turn to mush. But to be honest, strawberries, I wouldn't freeze so much. Uh, I would turn those into something like jam. So that I'm starting that conversation off with refrigeration as the off the get go. Uh, so let's see what everybody is saying. 
Uh, Adrian says some people do appear to be more arrogant these nowadays, talking about this person on the allotment. Indeed, I do agree. They can be a bit annoying about that. Um, this person is dumping weeds on my allotment. Just not on. Jenny says, looking at buying some used jute coffee bean sacks, food grade as they had beans in them. Thinking of using them as mulch, mulch, as as a mulch mulch. Any thoughts for or against? I've not thought about it. I can see it working to a certain extent. Depends how thick they are. But jute, yeah, would be food biogradable. Um, my only concern is how much they're going to cost, because I think they can be quite expensive and it might be a bit of a waste. If you're looking for anything, look at cardboard because that's free and usually available and grass clippings. That's what I like to use. and I use a lot of them. Um, what else have we got? Um, Oracle says, don't set the camera up. You will be shocked at what you could see. Talking about my wildlife camera. Yeah, I mean, that does worry me if I do set up. I'd be surprised just who is going on my alarm. But at the same point, it gives me a bit of security, especially after the vandalism we suffered earlier this year. I keep thinking it'll be a nice feature to add just to um, cover myself more than anything. Uh, Digwell, I was trialing two biostimulants to stop flea beetle for garden organic. No good. In fact, the treated seeds and compost were worse than the control. There we go. Flea beetle is a particularly um, annoying pest because it's so small it's hard to see yet the amount of damage it does particularly to cabbages and things it is really really annoying turbo stream says mostly free thing freeze things that won't keep um and that's a, a good vote for freeze rebecca says yep that's me rich i batch cook and freeze it all excellent yep that's like like myself try and do as I say, meals, ready meals, as we call them, that are just like curry. I mean, we make a vegetable curry using our homegrown produce and we just will have a meal out of that that night, make a big batch of it. And then we use, you know, the takeaway containers. We fill those up with the le what's left over at the end, wait for them to cool, put them in the freezer, put label on them first and then put them in the freezer. Have a big big stiffler for putting labels on on things uh, especially that goes into the freezer it annoys my wife no end because i'm always saying pull a label on it she likes to play freezer bingo where she pulls anything out and tries to guess what it is whereas i don't like playing that i like to know what i'm gonna eat uh, anna jones so far i've had rosemary beetle lily beetle and box caterpillars no flea beetle yet Fingers crossed you don't get flea beetle, but rosemary beetle and lily beetle and box caterpillars, give words out, box caterpillars are just as bad. Trust me. <laughs> Turbo stream. Strawberries are best preserved in my stomach with cream. Yum, yum. Yes, we've been harvesting our first strawberries this week, actually, uh, from the garden and from the lawn. outside strawberries. Absolutely delicious. There's something about the first strawberries that I always feel are the best. The most be best tasting ones. Um, uh, Idaho. I store potatoes and winter squash in a cool place in my garage. I also refrigerate and freeze and also make pickles and jams. I also can fruit and vegetables. I also dehydrate vegetables. Wow, that's a lot to get through right there. But um, let's pick this. Obviously, refrigeration and freezing. Yep, we do that, a lot of that. Now, storing potatoes and winter squash in a cool place in my garage. It's exactly what I do as well. I try and I fill I put them in jute bags and I suspend them from the ceiling in my um in my garage. I keep meaning to make a proper box up to to protect those. Uh, I do find that they last quite well. Onions and garlic also last quite well in there as well. Uh, I do find that it does make a huge huge difference uh, and. The best thing is when you store them like that, and there's no preparation that needs doing. They just live really happily in there and they can last a long time, particularly squash, providing they are prepared for storage correctly, of course. Uh, Digwell says, I wonder why Richard choose refrigeration, because as I said, it keeps me employed. Uh, Turbo stream. Has anyone tried pine chips? Steve Seaside allotment stores beetroot, etc., in boxes and keeps them damp. 
Um, yes, I have. Yes, this is a an old fashioned, or not so much an old fashioned way. There used to be a thing called a clamp that people would store root vegetables in, which was basically a straw with your root vegetables and more straw and more vegetables, more straw until it made a mound, and then they would pack it round and cover it with mud. And this is very similar to a box in the garage, which I keep meaning to build something like this. Boxes in the garage filled with damp sand to keep your carrots to your parsnips in. That's This is going to be the year that I'm going to make that and actually get something built. So um, that's another way. Yes, storing things in like in, in damp sand. Uh, Jenny says coffee sacks, this, uh, the coffee sacks using as a mulch are approximately seven pound for six. I thought they might look nice as I grow my veg in my garden. I mean, I think they would look nice. I've got no, 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 no got no problem with using them. I'll be interested to see uh, just how well they work. Like I said, I don't know of anybody that has used these jute stracks, jute sacks. Can't get my words out tonight for some reason, but we'll see if anybody else has an answer for that. Uh, Digwell says he uses the PNA125 pen, which he sent me, and it's a really, really good pen, I've got to say. Really good pen for not getting lost in the sun. You know when you write your labels and with Sharpie markers and the sun just seems to bleach them and they disappear or you lose the labels or they wash off? This PNA125 pen it doesn't happen. It's a great, great way to label things. Um, I freeze lots. I store my squash in our bedroom wardrobe as it's the coldest room. This is from Lisa. <laughs> Very romantic, she says. I don't want to know. Uh, potatoes, garlic, onions, apples, etc. are stored in cushion boxes at the side of the house. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I make jams, pickles and chutneys too. Well, yeah. Somebody else has been talking about jams, pickles, and chutneys as well. Again, I'm a big. I do. One of the when I lived in my flat on my own, actually, I started making jams and chutneys, and it was a lot of fun. That I try and do it as much. I had a lot more time back then to do these sort of things. But uh, jams, pickles. I mean, what I love when making pickles is the way that. Uh, the house just smells of that vinegary smell while it's being done, and it's it just such a, a beautiful smell. And um, uh, such a long period. I mean, I make this uh, apple chutney, which is really nice, but it takes about eight hours to make it on a stove. I tend to make it in my uh, slow cooker, which takes about 24 hours, but it is a beautiful, really mellow apple chutney that just tastes absolutely delicious once it's cooked and stores for ages. Uh, chili jam is also one of my favourite preserves like that. It's not necessarily a jam, but it is beautiful. Uh, jams, so easy to make, uh, providing you've got the pectin. Um, and pectin is easy. I, I tend to use so strawberries. I would take 500 grams of strawberries and then 500 grams of jam sugar because it has added, added pectin. And just pop the two together, boil them up till they reach 105 degrees, hold it there for a few minutes, and then there you go. You've got your jam, just pour it into jam jars. Um, but raspberry jam, for example, you don't need jam sugar because it's quite high in pectin. So I would take 500 grams of uh, raspberries and 500 grams of just normal sugar, pull them all together, um, boil them up, and be there. You go, made, made. Uh, what else have we got? Jenny says I am making a carrot cellar when everything is planted out. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, a root cellar type place. I, again, this is uh, some of the old fashioned ways that I I do like to see where they are still in use. Uh, just a shame. Most most houses do not have the function of using a, a root cellar anymore. Although I've seen somebody, um, she grows veg, I think it is, on Instagram. She has, she's just moved to a, a small holding type place. And they brought a, a World War II bomb shelter. And then I think it was the Anderson shelter, they would call them. And she's installing that in her garden as a root cellar. I thought that was a genius idea. Just a, as a <laughs> easy, excellent way to store root vegetables with no refrigeration. 
Uh, does it have to be damp sand for carrots or does it matter if it's dry? You want damp sand. Um, really, you want damp sand. The reason being, if it's dry, the carrots and what have you will uh, lose some of that moisture from themselves and that will go into the sand, if, as, as I understand it. And it will lead to the carrots or the parsnips or whatever they are drying out. Whereas if the uh, sand is damp, it will just hold that moisture around the root crop and just keep them a little bit fresher for that little bit longer. So that's why the sand needs to be damp. damp. Um, Jenny says marrow chutney is amazing. I've I've not made marrow chutney, so please do share that recipe. We'll give that a try. Uh, Julia Hartley has joined. Good evening to you and Digwell. I use Serto liquid pectin for my jams. That's another option. Yes, uh, Serto. I've seen that for sale in, in usually in the jam making area. Um, it's just pectin. It is possible actually to make your own pectin stock as well out of crab apples. Um, I've not done it myself, but you would sort of make almost like a, a crab apple stock with where you basically just simmer a load of chopped up crab apples in some water and then drain off and keep that liquid and that's meant to be a good way of making your own pectin stock again i've not done that myself i just use like I say jam sugar for simplicity more than everything more than anything uh great veg uk is joined good evening to you we are discussing how do you store your own homegrown produce now, the vast majority of us seem to be talking about uh, fr we use refrigeration. And then it seems like jams and chutneys are second on the list. We've talked about root cellar and storing it somewhere cool and dry as well, which we tend to do with pepper, um, not peppers, of course, not peppers, uh, potatoes and uh, carrots, parsnips, root crops. Uh, Jenny says, there was a brilliant garden at Chelsea with a cellar for storage of food and drink. It was placed in a large mound of earth that was all planted up. Solar light lights on the inside. It looked amazing. That sounds absolutely awesome. I think I did see pictures of that, which, which were shared to me. So, yeah, great, great to see. Now, you mentioned Chelsea in there. I've, I've just reminds me of something that I wanted to mention. Uh, Gardeners World Live starts this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Are any of you going? I'm going on the Thursday and on the Friday. It'd be great to catch up with some of you and uh, perhaps we'll meet up, have a spot of lunch or something at a certain point throughout the day. Um, let me know in the comments if you are going. I'm looking forward to going, actually. Really looking forward to going. I've uh, been... This would be my fourth time, I think, and it's always good to go. And this year, I'm actually going for two days to make a change. Uh, looking at my broad beans, I think they will have to go in the freezer. Yes, broad beans are coming in thick and fast, aren't they? From This is from Stuart Jackson. Now, broad beans, they easily freeze. I don't actually... I do blanch my broad beans, but they only need about a minute. And I find if they are younger broad beans, they taste so much better and are all the better for it and last so much longer in the um, um, in the freezer when they are younger. Um, and then what, what was my other method of preserving? Oh, well, alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Now, this is come from, coming from somebody that doesn't drink. So I've just thrown this other idea out there as well. Uh, I do like to... One alcoholic drink that I do drink is cider very occasionally. And I've actually got a apple tree that is specifically for cider apples on the allotment for that very reason. So I do make do make alcoholic drinks as well, particularly cider. I've made wine before as well, parsnip wine, pea pod wine, um, your standard wine from grapes. Just another idea that I've got of preserving things. Uh, so Rebecca is saying she is going on Thursday. Hopefully see you. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. Turbo stream, I'm certainly going on Thursday. We could have a mini meet if others are going. Yeah, I think that would be that would be cool. Uh, Digwell says Thursday for him as well. Um, yeah, it'd be cool, cool to meet up. 
Graham, I leave my main crop potatoes in their 35 litre pots after the foliage has died down and I store them in my polytunnel. This is actually something I used to do myself when I used to grow my potatoes in pots. Um, it actually works quite nicely in the sense that you don't have to worry about getting them in. In fact, because I'm so mild where I am, I couldn't even leave some outside. And I have left some in the ground to just harvest them as and when I need them. Our ground doesn't really freeze. But this way, for those who, who don't have as good as mild climates as I have, by just leaving your, 30, your if you're growing potatoes in pots, just leaving them in there unless you need them, of course, and just move them into the polytunnel or even wrap them it's the same as making what's a uh, uh, clam that i spoke about earlier effectively they just get a bit more warmth around them um and they they, they store okay as long as they're not frosted the worst thing that can happen to potatoes is if they get frosted because they turn this sort of weird color when you cut them open and they're, they're a bit like you can tell when they're frosted i'll put it like that Grow veg, very tempted to build an underground store for long term and over winter food storage. I actually have built an earth ship for a client recently and they are pretty much a root seller on steroids. That sounds very interesting. I've got to say a earth ship. But yeah, I've, I've, I've liked the idea of uh, an underground store as well. The idea I had, and I'm not sure if this would work, is to take an old chest freezer remove the gas from it, which I can do, and then bury that in the ground and use that as a a um, a store underground, a, a root cellar. Um, I would have to put something over the top just to insulate it a bit more. But that, that's my current thinking if I was to do it. But I'm not sure how it would look in our garden. Again, I, I what I'm looking at building in our garage because our garage is cool, dry and dark, and we don't really use it for storing a car at the moment, I'm looking at building a, a system of drawers that hold on to some damp stands and we can store our, our crops in that. I spoke about this earlier. Just take our carrots, our beetroot, our parsnips and share them in there. Um or install them in, in, in this. This is what I'm thinking of doing. Now, I have actually been sent a really good video about storage, which I think we should get going now because it's a good way to show how it's actually done. To blanch or not to blanch, that is the question. By blanching, you're killing the enzymes on the vegetables and you can store the vegetables in the freezer that much longer without blanching you probably store them for about a month so if you're going to use them short term don't bother blanching a lot of hassle for no reward bring a pan of water up to a rolling boil in with a veg back up to the boil then start timing small vegetables one minute bigger vegetables three four minutes and what you need to remember is into an ice bath or a cold water bath for the same amount of time that the vegetables were boiling not only does the ice bath stop the cooking process, it preserves the colour of the vegetables as well. This is just a single portion of peas. No point waiting till all your peas are ready to do it. I do one at a time. Another kilogram of cherry tomatoes, tumblers, off the uh, hanging baskets at the front. And I'm going to freeze these whole, so I'm going to give them a quick rinse, quick wipe, on a tray in the freezer. And when they're frozen, in a bag, so they don't all stick together. Right, a different process here, no blanching. If you blanch the tomatoes, they just split open and ruin anyway. These are no good for eating really, but they're great for sauces, so we'll add into soups and stews and that sort of thing. Very quickly, very, very quickly. Here we are a day later. I'm gonna get these in the bag before they stick together. And as you can see, the Meisner effect is already taking a it's taking place. That's where cold attacks the moisture. Seems like marbles. <laughs> and like I said, no good for putting on your salad, but great for pasta sauces, soups, stews, that sort of thing. Um, spinach going over now, so time to get some in the freezer pretty quick. I'm gonna uh what the hell yeah I'm gonna steam it, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to cut the stems off. I don't like the stems. Just checking each leaf. 
100 grams here actually, not too bad. Doesn't take long to wilt, look. Come on. Uh, cooked already. Only a small portion. Enough for me. So that's how I uh, the dandelion seed. Um, that's what I do. I freeze them in uh, individual portions. There's no point breaking them off a big block, if you know what I mean. I'll do. Turn that off. That quick. Doesn't matter if I get it all because I'm doing another lot in a minute. What I'll do, I'll freeze that and then I'll um, vacuum bag it up later. Let's get the spinach in there. Maybe cut that a bit too short. We'll see. Vacuum and seal. There we go then. One bag of. Here we are, that'll be three meals. Okay then, so from the larger potatoes I want fries, scallops and shredded for hash browns, so... Great, I'm ready for hash browns. I remember this, a bit of a potato day. Uh, roll in boil again and then into the ice bath for the same amount of time as the potatoes were boiling. It's going to be about three minutes. Hash browns will be about one minute. Um, go on, where are we? Scallop potatoes will be about three minutes again because they are quite large. Fries or chips, two minutes. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> and these will be about four minutes. Um, they'll keep for several months. Several being many, not a few, as in America. Uh, nine months or so, I reckon. Yeah, be all right. Cool. Let's get them back in the freezer before they start. Yeah, they're getting wet already. Here we are then, hard spuds. Fantastic. What a great little video from Digwell showing you how he stores some of his homegrown produce. Got quite a few, few things uh, I want to say. Uh, the tomatoes at the beginning, obviously, yeah, freeze them whole. I personally, I tend to try and stew ours or make them into puree or pasta sauce to go in the freezer as well. Um, just to save space, just to save space for me. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, those vacuum sealers, if you can afford one, get one. Because, again, they save so much space and they look after your food so much better than cling film. Uh, one of the, my biggest pet hates is when food gets what's called freezer burn. And then it's just where the freezer, or the, there's too much air around the food and it burns it from being frozen from cold temperature. I'm not explaining that very well, I know, um, but it's one of my pet hates. So, again, what if you can afford one of those vacuum sealers, they are well worth it. Um, in fact, 
I know. I love my vacuum sealer. Indeed, I do love my vacuum sealer as well. Uh, Nick's Alumn has joined. Hello. Lovely to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you are well. Uh, we're just prepping the raw beans Italian style for the freezer. Please do share us how you how are doing that. That would be great. Uh, Beatrice says, great video. Dig well. You're so organized. Excuse me. Uh, brilliant ideas. Dig well. Rebecca asks if they are expensive. Um, I think that depends on what you would call it. Are they expensive? I trying to remember. Um, um, I think my, ours was about £50. And then you buy, we buy them in a roll, sort of the, the bags. But we cut our bags to size as and when we need them, which I find to be cheaper way of doing it. Um, Lakeland I got mine from, but I'm sure there's some on uh, other places such as Amazon. Uh, I, I would I would try and search, but it's difficult to try and search while chatting to you guys. Uh, yeah, Digwell makes sauces, etc. with the big, bigger tomatoes. Fantastic. Um, Oracle has got lost words for Digwell, indeed. Um, absolutely brilliant. Stream. I have still got raw beans in the freezer from last year. Yeah, I had chilies in our freezer, chili peppers, for about eight years before we finally finished them. That was a good year with chili peppers that year, to say the least. Uh, Kate Spratt, just got home. I bought some approved seeds for our new tortoise to grow. I got sent some unidentified plants in a box, two without a pot, just some wet soil and nearly dead. I wanted to support a small company, I'm guessing. Um, complain. If they are a small company, they don't want that sort of thing happening. So do do a go and have a, a complaint about that. Uh, all that's good. But I think it's about £50. I could be wrong. I mean, it's like so many things with a kitchen. There's probably some more at the higher end of a scale. But uh, let's say Amazon is probably a good place to go and look. Or Lakeland's where I got mine from. I like to can tomatoes for sauce, stewed and pureed to save sp space in the freezer. I tend to do a bit of both, depends on the harvest. Great video, dig well. Now, I, I've i always wanted to try canning. This is something that I, I've done it once with French beans, but I was never brave enough to actually to eat the beans afterwards to see if it actually worked. This is something I really want to do. I'm just not brave enough to do it. So I really want to get a few ideas. I probably need to go on a course or something to learn how to can. Um, but if anybody has got ideas on how how to can that they can instruct me with, I generally would like to know. And do I need to be worried? Uh, Chili Kate, hi all. Sat whilst preparing leeks and garlics for the dehydrator. Dehydrator, that's another one. Um, uh, dehydrating food that uh, we haven't discussed. Now, I was thinking about this with herbs at a certain point because we do dry some of our herbs, mint or uh, parsley. And what I what I find to dry herbs is I tie. A pick a big bunch try and give them a shake to get rid of anything pick them early in the morning as well then tie them up and then hang them up in my garage until they are dry what i find if i dry them somewhere where they get light they lose their color i find if i dry them somewhere dark they don't lose their color so much and so i do um a lot of herbs i dry like that and i prefer dried herbs again easy for space uh but also things in the dehydrator we've experimented a lot i mean we, we we use our dehydrator hell of a lot at the moment and um something that was quite interesting was jerusalem artichokes dehydrated they were a bit like toffee um again that's another good one we've dehydrated chilies chili peppers we've dehydrated pineapple as well not that we've grown hot pineapple but um good i good thing i forgot about this dehydrator um my personal Italian chef and his wife are doing them for me in the allotment canteen. <laughs> ah, good enough, good enough. Uh, Jenny says, I'm building a stash of reusable freezer bags. I'm trying to reduce my plastic use, my personal bugbear, single-use plastic. I'm with you on that. I am absolutely with you on that. Uh, the 
the, what we find with the bags with the vacuum packs is that once you open them, yes, they sort of are single, but you can once the bag is washed out, we reuse them and use them a few times. Um, here we go. Jenny uh, from Digwell. I have a canner, but I am always in doubt when I open the jars. No bad ones yet. This is the same trouble I have with canning. I've done it, but I've just not been brave enough to really try it. And this is something I... Um, I really want to want to find out. In fact, Nick Salomon, I do that. I have a video you can watch. Tomato sauce lasts for years. Um, that would be great to see. Is that on your YouTube channel? If it is, I will I will watch it and try and if if I've got your permission, I'll download it and use it next week if that's possible. Uh, Lisa from Not Just Green Fingers UK blog says, I feel exactly the same as you about canning. It worries me too, but I would love to be able to do this safely. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I, I feel I feel it's such an old-fashioned way that it probably is completely safe. But I've just never been brave enough to actually do it and try and do it and try and make the most of it. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one that worries us. Idaho Garden Girl is the one to teach us. It is very popular over the pond indeed. That's probably where I first heard about it over in uh, the Americas. And yeah, this is something I really, really want to know. Uh, Idaho actually says, I follow canning instructions from the USDA or Bull Brand Canning Book. Again, I think my pressure cooker came with instructions on canning. And it makes it sound so easy. And I've, I have done it. I've just not been brave enough to try it in the end. Uh, Rebecca, this is a good question, actually. Do you find mint loses its flavour when dried? Like, this is a very, very good question. I find when it's dried, it doesn't lose its flavour. If anything, it intensifies the flavour. Um, I find freezing mint does lose the flavour, does lose some of the flavour. But um, dried, I don't don't find it. In fact, I find it intensifies, I guess, because it's removing some of that moisture and those oils are just becoming a bit stronger. Uh, I guess that's my theory anyway. Uh, if a jar lid pops, they are safe to store. Yeah, this is a bit like jam making. If you can press the top, they have not sealed properly. You will know if they are bad. It will look like layers of sediment, etc., etc. I, you are right. I know you are completely right. I just still there's just something holding me back, and I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, Digwell says quite a few veg can be dehydrated to make toffee. I was really surprised with um, Jerusalem artichokes, just how much like toffee they were. But uh, yeah, dehydrator is a really good way of storing a lot of stuff. In fact, I've made like this apple sauce and. I've uh, just seen TurboStream's comment. Um, I made like an apple sauce, which I then dehydrated. It almost like made like kids chew street sweets. Uh, TurboStream, I've made some apple sauce made in jars and the lids are welded on. There we go. This is what I'm, this is what I'm looking for. So I guess in these apple sauce are made in a, in, stored in, in cans as well, which was effectively a canning situation. This is what we need to know. Uh, Stuart is saying, let me just sort my arrow out. Uh, this week's plant sale made another £226.50 in a week. That's fantastic for the Brain Cheerio charity. Plus, I sold £50 worth of veg plants today. I may be not 100%, but the fundraising doesn't stop. This should push over 17000 over the past few years. Fantastic. Round of applause for Stuart for that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Jenny says, to be clear, the jar lids will make a pop sound when the jars are in water. If you can press and dent the lids, it has not worked. Yeah, it's a bit like jam jars, isn't it, with that pop? And when you open them, it goes. Um, again, this is something I love when I make jam. I make a load of bottles up and leave it to cool. And you just see this ping, 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 ping as they're all sealing. And any that haven't sealed, I eat straight away. Uh, Nicola Cornish Heaven has joined. Just woken up. We'll have to listen to a replay for the previous chat. Please do. Hope you're okay. Uh, if you freeze herbs in ice cubes, they keep their flavour. I, I find they lose a slight bit of flavour. Um, I'm guessing because of the water. I just find that drying intensifies the flavour. Uh, 
I'm not strong enough to open the jars. I'm talking about these apple apple uh, sauce. Um, Digwell, do you freeze the herbs in oil? I've tried tried it in oil before. I didn't find it worked very well at all. Um, so Digwell, do you freeze them in oil? As is, is the next question. Um, I love I love this. So we uh, we we end up asking Digwell a lot of questions after his video. But the oil was another one actually. Oil and vinegar storing some of our our homegrown produce in oils and vinegar. Again, I've done vinegar, especially with pickled onions or pickled eggs and pickled uh, gherkins. Done a lot of those over the years, and uh, I quite like them. I've got to say, and they store for a really long time. Although they do get a bit of a vinegary flavour with them. But uh, one of the uh, storing in, in oil is something I've again I'm a bit afraid of doing. I've wanted to store some garlic in oil, so as uh, on the hope that they would just last for a long, long time. But then somebody mentioned botulism, and that's really put me off from trying to store them in oil. Again, this is one one question that we I want to get over tonight. Garlic is a great example of how do you store garlic? And usually I just store it in a clove hanging in our garage. But this year I'm thinking of making a garlic puree and then freezing that as a garlic puree. Um what's your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on that? Now Nick says it's video 52 and happy for you to show it. The recipe is from Italian Joe and has been in his family for generations. We will check that out. I'll see if I can download it and play it next week. Thank you very much for that, Nick. We will I'll be interested in that a lot. Uh, Pauline King, good evening to you. Hi, Richard. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Uh, no, in water, the whole ice cube goes into the recipe. Okay, uh, start talking about freezing ice cubes of herbs. That's interesting. Very, very interesting that. Uh, at this point, I just want to remind everybody, if you're enjoying this show, then please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a follow. Please do subscribe. And don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live, which is the same time every week. 6 p.m. on a Sunday. Um, Rebecca says, I store basil in oil. It's great as you can just pop it into your frying pan. This is what I'm looking at and trying to do more of as well. Um, so this is great. This is what I want to know. Um, how do you have to heat the oil up? Though? This is what I've read about botulism. And particularly, I was looking at chilies. Now, you're meant to heat the oil up and in store it. Uh, so Chili Kate says, I've done a professional canning course. I'm a food scientist. I didn't know that. That, that would have been great. Um, I should have got you on this show. That would have been great. And there's so much that can go wrong if you get it wrong. Much safer using high acid foods like tomatoes and apples than non-acidic. This, this is, a, uh, this is some, a discussion. I'll have to get you actually on the show one day, Chili Kate, and uh, have a discussion about this. Let's we'll see what we can do and share some of your inspiration on that. I'm going to do some chive blossom vinegar this week. Use the chive flowers in white vinegar and it will turn a lovely pink and give it a great flavour. I've never heard of that. So it's almost becoming like a, a tea, but with vinegar and chive blossom. What a great idea. What a great idea. Um, garlic or herb butter frozen in in cubes is nice yeah yeah that's very nice i like i make a garlic butter from time to time and actually what i'll do is i'll make the garlic butter butter and garlic basically and a bit of uh parsley and then i'll what i'll do is i'll store it pull it into a grease proof paper and roll it into a a sort of uh tube i guess not tubes the wrong word but you know what i mean almost like a rolling pin and then freeze that. But when it's been in the freezer for about an hour, I pull it out of the freezer and just cut little about to about halfway down, notches all the way down. So it, it almost looks like a Toblerone bar at this point. Then goes back in the freezer. And what I do, if I'm making or need garlic butter, I can just snap a little piece off. Uh, top tip there for my way of making garlic butter. Uh, Digwood says, I make 
pickled Chinese tea eggs yesterday for the Berkeley show two weeks today. Pickled Chinese tea eggs, what are they? Um, Pauline says, I think the herbs in ice cubes works well. So I just find it lost a bit of flavour when I've done it, but I could be wrong. Uh, Nick says, tap the lid on a hard surface. It will eventually pop. Then you can open the lids or put a teaspoon on the lid to pop it easy. I think this is for Turbo Stream, who's having problems opening his tin of apple. Um, um, the word's just gone out of my brain. I hate it when this happens. I can picture it. Apple sauce. That's what I was looking for. Um, yeah, uh, he's having trouble with that. Her butters too freeze well. Indeed, they do. I have garlic oil, my favourite go-to oil. I think that was the one that I was warned about with botulism. So uh, this is why, again, I get worried about botul about these sort of things. I, th I think this is where the freezer comes in because it's so easy. Uh, Rebecca, I didn't. Just popped into ice cube trays with whizzed up basil. I'm still alive. Okay. Okay, that's great to know. Um, oh, what, what, was your basil and oil then frozen in ice cube trays? I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. We've got some basil coming into uh, coming ready very soon, so that'd be a good one to try. Uh, nice one, Kate noted that one down. Her butters, that was, I think. And Digwell, <laughs> Digwell think Green Fingers has a brilliant video on making chili oil. I used it last year for mine, yeah. Yes, I, I do like chili oil as well. We've got a lot of chilies to get through this year, and I think we're going to be making a lot of chili oils. My favourite thing to do with chili oil, chilies, though, chili jam. It is delicious. Uh, Digwell says, if you freeze garlic puree in ice cube trays, make sure you cover the tray or pot in a bag. Otherwise, everything touches it will stink of garlic, including your hands. Yeah, I mean... This is what we keep coming back to as well. We need a huge collection of ice cube trays in our freezers just for a lot of our herbs. Again, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Turbo stream, I might try that. Boiling water sometimes pots the lid to... Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, Chili Kate says, sorry, I didn't think about it. Just been a bad week. Happy to come on in the future. I spent 16 years in factory making sauces, ch chutneys, pastes like lazy garlic. For the supermarket that would be great chili kate we will have to um organize something perhaps later on in a year i'll come up to you and we'll try and do a, a live show and share all this um as an idea <laughs> rebecca says yes it was i hope i don't kill you i'm sure you won't I'm, if it's in the freezer i'm pretty sure excuse me pretty sure it is safe it's i believe botulism is when it's not refrigerated. Um, I'm trying to think what botulism. I'm trying to remember how botulism works. It's something to do with it's when bacteria dies and then it ferments or something. So, um, yeah, yeah, and it's just what's worried me. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, and Rebecca used olive oil to make her basil oil it's a good question actually a good good point actually we were talking about oils and what oils do you like to use because i find some oils their own taste on their own can be a bit sort of strong i mean olive oil is a pretty good one i find to use we use olive oil a lot but rapeseed oil is another one we use but there are some oils some flower oil is particularly got its own particular place taste that can be quite strong and can tend to cause certain problems with that so when you are making these oil uh, herb oils and what have you what oils do you use to make them uh that, that's another question i have while going through this um i think we have pretty much covered all the ways that we are preserving our foods or all the ways I can think of. I did think actually certain fermentations of creating foods. Again, I've never tried this. I think I tried making sauerkraut once. It turned out it wasn't too bad, if I remember correctly. But again, I've not been too brave or not been brave enough to see it leave or last for a long 
period. So we ate it quite quickly. Um, sauerkraut is like a fermented German dish. It's or German side dish, I guess you would call it. A bit like coleslaw, I guess. And it's sort of a fermented cabbage, if I remember correctly. It's quite tasty. It's just again it's that whole thing i don't don't i was a bit worried about leaving it for too long uh kate says rapeseed oil holds flavor well yeah rapeseed is one the one that we tend to use i mean a lot of vegetable oil these days are now becoming rapeseed oil um but again we ended up when we were really really into our cooking not that we're not into our cooking, of course, but when we were really, we had every type of oil imaginable and it ended up taking up so much space in our cupboards just for oils alone. Um, I forgot to say, I simmer rhubarb and gooseberries and freeze in ice cube trays, then pop them into containers. I add a couple of cubes in my porridge each morning together with frozen currant and it's delicious. That's, I never thought of, of freezing... <laughs> Freezing that in small doses like that. We're going to need a lot of ice cube trays at this rate, aren't we? A lot of ice cube trays. Um, chili cake botulism is caused by the spores of Clostridium botulinum, which grows at room temperature. So chilled and frozen is no risk, but botulism can be fatal. That's what's always worried me. That's the one that has always worried me, especially as we do... Um, we do have a lot of people around for dinner and feed them a lot of stuff that we grow and store. And quite often at Christmas, I like to give away jars of our current, our, our jellies and our jams and our uh, pickles and things like that as well. And I'm always, always worried about people getting botulism. I mean, it's never happened. It's never happened. I'm always very, very careful with it. But some of our canned food and our, food that we can preserve in oils is what we are uh, looking at doing a bit more of and that's what worries me with botulism as we've discussed tonight <laughs> all this freezing hope we don't get a prolonged power cut it's a good point it's a good point if we do lose our freezers what do you rely on after that it's a this is some way what this is probably why i want to learn about canning because I just feel, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'm a refrigeration engineer, so I know I, if our freezer breaks down, we've got three of them, so I can easily fix them or what have you. But if there's a power cut, which is beyond my control, I can't exactly run them off my little power pack for long. So, yeah, and this is why I want to learn a bit more about canning. Added to that, I was working in a customer of ours a couple of months back, and it was this old manor house, absolutely stunning place to go and work. And I'm working down in their basement on their fridge. And to the to the side of me, they had stored in these beautiful kilner jars of some of their homegrown produce with like uh, dill peppers and um, with dill and uh, just canned carrots and things like that. And I was just loving loving how they looked on this um worktop on this shelving unit just how they look just all these beautiful little colors and their different layers and preserved food that looks really really fresh as well so yeah that's why i want to really learn about canning um yikes i've never thought of this you've all scared me now maybe no more basil cubes don't worry if you're freezing if you are freezing your basil cubes it is fine as uh chili kate has said it's if they're at room temperature if you're not if you're storing them in uh just storing them in oil without any freezing freezing that's why i was asking if you froze them um it's what i was i was looking at doing this in garlic particularly when somebody mentioned it and i looked into it more I was just taking some garlic peeling them throwing them into a jar and pouring oil over them which I thought was would be okay, but that's a risk of um, that's where there's a risk of botulism, as I understand it as well. Um, so we've got leaky fingers, Rebecca. Not an issue if you're freezing cubes, so you're you're fine. Stuart Jackson, I found some really good ice cube trays in a charity shop. I use them for mostly herbs. I can remember my nan salting runner beans when I was a kid. Yes, yeah, salting. 
salting. I know people used to do that with fish and things as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get some more ice cube trays, certainly, for that. Um, salting runner beans. Salting runner beans. How, how was that done? Uh, Nick Solomon, that's why canning is so good. No threat from a power cutter. I can also can new potatoes. Delicious. We've got to learn how to can. I've got to learn how to can. So I quickly, I've got some photos as well. There's not a huge amount of photos to go through this week, but we have had a few photos that have gone up in the group. So let's have a quick look at uh, what we have. I want to be down here. So Stuart Jackson has harvested some of his first strawberries by the looks of it. Look delicious, don't they? And strawberries are coming into season now, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, and they are so tasty. He's also harvested some raw beans, so he's looking at ways to store those, as we've been discussing. Uh, Kate's also got some strawberries. There's a theme here so far, isn't there? Strawberries. Um, Ian Beddows, who... I, I have seen him tonight. We were talking last week about the bargain corner plants, and he brought this plant about 10 years ago for 10p, and it's grown into a huge, massive plant. I could have made that picture a little bit bigger. I'm sorry. Um, just goes to show, it was a bit of a stick when he first bought it, but a bit of TLC, it's amazed what you can do. Um, oh, that's from last week. Uh, Steve has had a delivery of the a few seeds from our Veg Grower Podcast Supporters Club. For those that don't know, I run a supporters club for the podcast and the live show. Details on that are at the vegegrowerpodcast.co.uk. So that's all the photos that have gone up this week. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. And please do share them for any more photos that you have for next week. But just go into our Facebook group under the Veg Grower Podcast and share them in there and I'll pick them up from there. Or you can send them to me by email, richard at the uk. Send them to me via social media. If you've got videos as well, um, send them to me via wetransfer.com as well. It's a great way. And that's at the Grower Podcast or richard at the uk again. Um what have, what have we got? Turbo Stream says, in an ideal world, we would produce crops all year round and eat seasonally, so reducing the need to store things. Wonder what we did before freezers. Well, this is where the old-fashioned ways, the clamps, the um, uh, the root stores, the canning, that's what we would do before freezers. Uh, drying them as well, which not so easy to do in a UK climate without heat, but that was what we would do. Um, <sighs> freezers have revolutionised things, don't get me wrong. They, they were a, a good invention, but they've also made us expect food or be able to eat uh, out of season a lot easier. Ian Meadows, household insurance would normally pay out for freezer failure. Great excuse to buy some more seeds. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> I'd love to do that with beans, but that's a particular type of salt that was used, apparently. Yeah, I've not done it myself. I've not done it myself, so I'd I'm, I'm be interested to know. Do many of you guys dry beans and store them in jars? Actually, that's a very good one, drying beans. So I am growing bellotti beans. That'll be a dried bean. And what I tend to do when it comes to dried beans, I've done it, done it with peas as well, actually, is I just let leave them on the plant until they go dry on the plant and the, the case goes hard and crackly you know when they're ready and then i just take them out of the pod pop them into a jar and store them absolutely if you're looking at one of the easiest storage dried beans is probably the easiest when it comes to eating them they do take quite a bit of boiling to get them to be edible in the same way because they are they're almost like a, a an old piece of meat or an old let's take an old chicken that's so old and dry and stringy that it's almost inedible when you dry beans this way they've gone old and they've gone um quite hard so which is great for storage but they do take quite a bit of preparation shall we say to get them ready for eating uh, that reminds me, if anyone needs any plants, B and Q have a lot half a large 50% sale off all plants. 
Interesting. Interesting. Didn't know that, but that's a good to share. Uh, no freezer. We have a big stone slab under the stairs pantry. Oh, that's interesting. That's, uh, so big stone slab under the stairs pantry. How does that work? How does that work? Explain more, Ian, please. Uh, Jenny, I tried to store dry beans last year in jars. They went mouldy, so went in the bin. Right, so what's probably happened there is that they've gone in damp. Um, so you need to make sure they are really dry before they are stored. Like I say, leave them until the, the, the pods are really dry and crackly and then take them out of the pods. I would probably just leave them on the worktop for a couple of days just to make sure they are completely dry as well. Bolotti, I have Bolotti, great Greek ignorance runner and butter beans growing up, growing to up my game. Butter beans, they're going to be... Be interesting to know if you can can grow butter beans in the UK because I've had a lot of people to say it's not possible. Right. Well, this has been a really good chat. I think a lot of us are looking at improving, particularly our canning game and our ways of storing our homegrown produce, which is what it's all about. Um, so those who are going to Gardener's World are live on Thursday or Friday. Um, I'm just thinking probably the best way because I don't want to try and arrange it with everyone else who's not going because I just feel that's forgetting kicking them out of the conversation if you want to email me and we'll try and work out a time that we can all get together on either day and uh, have a bit of a chat and I'll probably record some things with you for the podcast if you are going um, Turbo Stream says I thought I dried them out were on a plate for a couple of weeks it sounds to me like there was a bit of just not quite dry enough in my, uh, I, I think. Where did you get your Greek gigantes? I've been trying to get some to grow. Uh, yes, we do that every year with beans. Make sure the jar is completely dry as well. So that's a good point. Make sure the dry, jar is completely dry. And... Jenny says, the old stone worktop is old school. My friend had one in our house over 600 years old. Small low mesh window, which is always open over the st stone. No sun, super cool. I've never heard of this. I'm going to have to, next time I'm in an old building, I'll have to look at um, and see what's there. Um... Rebecca says, are you planning to buy anything at Garner's World Live, Richard? I'm there to work, technically, so I may not, technically probably shouldn't be buying, but I will be. I'm going to look for, I want to get some Szechuan pepper, see if I've got any plants of those. And um, I want to get some biochar as well. I've run out of biochar, so I'm looking to get that as well from Garner's World Live. Um the two things I'm looking for, but of course I'm going to be pretty well behaved. The stone kept the small space under the stairs cold. I'll send a picture. I use it to keep white wine cool. I'm interested in this. Generally am really interested in this uh, to see how it works. Uh, Greek gigantes from real seeds. There we go. And I say some Greek gigantes i am probably pronounce that completely wrong. Greek Gigantes from last year, and they are growing well. Never heard of them before, so I'm interested in these. Really am really interested in these. Uh, Nicholas says thanks to Jenny. Um, right. So what are we going to be discussing next week? In fact, I've made a banner up ready to remind me about this. And it kind of ties into something that we've been discussing tonight. I've recently, I've always grown herbs, and next week I'm sort of looking at my, where I built, or where we've moved our chickens to. We've got an area at the front where I was growing herbs there anyway. But I'm thinking, I want to add a few more herbs. I want to know what herbs you grow, what conditions they like to grow, and how you grow them, etc., etc. So next week I really want to talk, discuss about creating a herb garden. So six six o'clock next Sunday, right here, Facebook page, YouTube channel, uh, Facebook group as well, every Sunday at six. 
creating a herb garden and share your ideas on that. Um, oh, hang on, wrong one. Let me just get rid of that and go back to that. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're planning to do next week. Um, what else have we got? Digwell says, we had a big stone shelf in our larder. 1960s house kept everything cool. See, I, my house is a 1930s house, and we don't have anything like that that I'm aware of. I'm intrigued by this. Uh, Jenny got 100% germination. I'm growing Greek gigantism as well. They are looking great at the, gigantes at the moment. They are looking great at the moment. Never heard of them, so I'm really interested to see what, what, what they are like. My strawberries are very small this year, maybe four or five years old. It's time to start using one. Yes, Ian, yes. Strawberries are, you find they last, the plants last about three years before they start getting a bit too tired and don't produce as well. Uh, so what I like to do, and I try and do this, is I have a, the first year strawberries, I take the runners um, from those and they become the next year's first strawberries and then um, once the ones reach three years old I've actually got another supply of other strawberry plants from the previous runners so it doesn't bother me to get rid of the old strawberries so yeah I suspect they are very very old and that's why you're getting problems with them uh Ian Bennett says hope everyone has clicked the thumbs up button please do click the thumbs up button please do give us a like please do give us a subscribe please do give us a follow and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you know when we go live I know I said that earlier but it's only right I say it again um please do please do please do tell me my understands cupboard is a toilet <laughs> won't be storing food in there no no of course not uh, Chili Cake says, I love this topic. I picked up some lemongrass yesterday, so that's already for next week's subject as well. Uh, fantastic. Please do share some photos. Plant the old strawberry plants out for the birds. Good idea. Good idea, actually. And a lot of old, a lot of old, a lot of houses had stone shelves in the larder when I was young in the 60s and the 70s. I've never heard of them. I know it was a bit, a bit younger than the 60s and 70s, I'm an 80s child, but I've never heard of these stone shells in the larder. And like I say, my house was built in 1938. It certainly doesn't have it that I'm aware of. And, and we've got a larder. We've got a larder. And my only thing I can think is that it's been removed. But I have to have a chat with, uh, we've got a guy about two doors down. He was born in these house, this his house that he lives in, still lives there to his day, and his house pretty much is the same as when it was born. So he must be, when well, he's retired, so he's certainly in his 70s. So he must have known about this stone shelf if they had it in his house. I'm going to have to ask him about that when I see him next, because that's got me really, really curious. Just sort that out. Uh, I think... Have we covered the stone shells were often pulled out when fridges became common? That's um, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, and I suspect has happened. But I'll be interested to know if this house did have one, and can we get it back? Toby Stream, there's been some great ideas to note. This is what this show is brilliant at. Exactly right. And it has been. It's inspired me tonight to actually give Canon another go and be brave enough to really get stuck in and eat the food that we can. I've, 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 I think I said it earlier. I've been a little bit unbrave about doing it in the past. I did can some runner beans, some French beans, sorry, but I was just a bit too afraid to do it. And now I'm like, I really want to try it um, again. Really want to be brave enough to do it. I want to give this uh, basil oil a try, but freeze it. Not, not the way I was thinking. I do it. Chili oil. I want to try again freeze it not uh not on the worktop uh yeah it's inspired me to go back and give a lot of these things a try again um and really make a good good start at storing our foods and i want to move away like i said i want to move away from the fridges and the freezers as well just in case something does go wrong with them uh, yeah covid taught us that what you what can happen is what you don't expect 
So it is certainly very, very possible. Uh, in Meadows, we even had an air raid shelter when we moved in. Not an Anderson one, but a reinforced concrete one that was being used as a coal store. I think there was an Anderson shelter, well, there was an Anderson shelter in our garden. And I, I'm half expecting to find one when we dig up our patio. Um, I doubt it. I very much doubt it is there, but I would really like to find one there because that would make my day and that would be that would be kept. We would use it as a what was that? No, it's my phone. Uh, that would be used as a, um, a a root cellar, as well as a bit of fun. We'd get some lights in there. Uh, Idaho says, thank you for another great program. No, thank you for joining us. We've still got about eight minutes to go. So has anybody got any final thoughts on this food storage system while I'm trying to think in my head of what I want to leave with? I think... What we've discussed tonight, we've got the fridge and freezers. That seems the most popular. We've got making jams and pickles and uh, uh, chutneys and jellies. That is also just as popular. Canning. Those that have been braver have done it. We're going to watch this video next week from Nick's allotment and give that a try next. Give that a try moving forward. We're going to be brave about that. Root sellers is something that we've discussed. Um, storing our got um well squash plants actually squashes and potatoes some are cool dry and dark the garage seems to be the popular option for that um uh, margaret says my house might have had a meat safe it might have done i'd love to find out i would really love to find out uh, love tonight thank you to everyone for some such for such good tips from Lisa, indeed. Uh, Stuart, I want to say thanks for all the kind words after my up. Also, thanks to the Supporters Club for all the seeds, which will keep me going over the next few weeks. You are welcome, buddy. I'm just glad to see that you are on the mend and on the, on, on the way health. Uh, the freezer really is your best friend in the dark nights of winter. I totally agree with that. Having a little reminder of summer. I totally agree with that. Like I said, we are we are pretty i mean we use our freezer a lot all three of them and we are we are the type we'll make a curry we'll make a big batch of it and we'll freeze it in fact i'm having one when i finish tonight with some bombay potatoes i'm made out of potatoes from the allotment um the freezer is our friend but if we can can food as well how how amazing would that be to be able to can some pasta sauces or something just to add a different dimension this is something i'm really going to try and do this year um so keep watching i'll try i'll try and share with you how i get on with the canning and then in the future we'll try and get chili kate on to discuss this as well um from her scientific background it'd be really interesting to find out more about that i think uh digwell says i'm taking the train to get there thursday split ticket in 27 pound instead of 68 pound I dread to think how much it's going to cost me in fuel. Um, I'm taking the train to get there Thursday. Split ticket in 27. What's split ticket in? Please do share what split ticket in is. I've never heard of that. Uh, I don't think Stuart does anything other than grow plants to sell for charity. He teaches how to, kids how to grow garden, grow plants in school as well, don't forget. So he does lots. I say those that go into Gardeners World Live on Thursday or Friday, please please do get in touch um, and let me know. Uh, um, let me know. Um, we're trying to arrange a a time or a place that we can all get together. We'll have a look on the maps later um, to find a suitable spot. Possibly, I mean, Veggie Pod is probably going to be a stall that we might find easily. Um, or somewhere in the gardens. But again, I don't want to discuss that when there's people who aren't going and exclude them from the conversation tonight. So please do email me, richard at uk, or again, Facebook or any other messaging device if you are going, and we'll sort that out. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, we've got four minutes to go and I'm trying to think of how we can just sort of, I've summarised my thoughts on this, is that I've been inspired to give Canon another go. Uh, I don't want to retread over that old ground. I think we've pretty much covered all our storing or our food storage ideas. Um, 
I think that's it. I, th- I, I do think that is it. I can't believe we've come to the end of the show and I'm losing for word, lost for words. Uh, Digwell says, split ticketing, you break the journey but stay on the same train. So instead of a ticket from Gloucester to Birmingham, I've gone from Gloucester to Worcester, 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 then Worcester. Okay, okay, I see how that works now. That's an interesting way to make it cheaper. I mean, I'm driving up in Elfie the Elfard and um, I've got to find a park up somewhere that I can just sort of camp up for the night nearly any sea and get a half decent night's sleep before uh heading before going back there the following day i was hoping to to stay in the actual nec overnight but they don't allow overnight parking might be different when i'm there of course heard a story from airliners live that one of their mods found it cheaper to fly to spain and back to london they can get the train. A friend of mine actually did that. He was up north somewhere and it was cheaper to get a plane from his nearby to Belfast and then uh, to London than it was to save um, than it was to, to, to drive. It, yeah, it's crazy. Best place to store food is in your belly, indeed. And uh, safe journey up, Richard. It will be certainly be a safe It's going to be a long drive. It's was it about three hours for me to get up there? That's just, hopefully there'll be no traffic on the roads. I tend to leave here about six o'clock in the morning, get there for about nine. Um, last year I got invited to the after party, so I was there for a bit longer. Um, it's a long day, long day, but it's so fun. That's why I'm doing it over two days to try and actually get around and see everything a bit more and spend a bit more time with everyone, right. We're coming to the end now. I've babbled on enough. I think I've, I've the last couple of minutes just been me dragging it out. So uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been great chatting to you as always. Like I say, next week we will be back with uh, creating a herb garden. So if you've got any thoughts, any ideas on that, it'd be great to hear your thoughts and your suggestions for that as well. Um, what herbs should go in, what herbs you grow and why and how you go about growing them. Um, so let's just finish off these comments quickly. Uh, Digwell says, see you soon, guys. Uh, can you camp on the car park at the NEC? I don't think we can. No, I've, I've looked into that and I don't think it's can. Nick says, goodbye, Richard and everyone. Goodbye, uh, NEC. Thanks for another live show. See you all next week. See you all next week. Have a great week, everyone, and great show again. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for another good chat, or good chat. Uh, Looking forward to next week's Herbs. Indeed, it's going to be a lot of fun. Great show, Richard. Cheers from Graham. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Pauline says, night, Richard. See you soon. Indeed, thank you for a lovely show. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. A lot of thank yous. So it's been great. Um, Next week, Herbs get ready for another great show thanks so much everybody for making the show what it is i'll see you again next week